are uh, looking here. It looks like, well, well now, it looks like I'd, Jennifer Thompson I'd was I'd like listening. to say, I guess the first thing that I'd like to say is I would like to, um, we're very grateful to the Mertonette Chapel Church of Christ. They've been gracious to us this whole time. They've been really kind. Um, and so, you know, our heart goes out to them. They suffered a loss and it was a real tragedy. So I'd like to thank them and especially Pastor Joey Spann. He is just the nicest, kindest person. We'd really like to thank him. He's been so kind towards Emmanuel Sampson. And I, as a person, am very grateful for that. I have to say I'm very disappointed in today's verdict and last Friday. Um, you know, I feel like the state of Tennessee and the law in the state is just behind in terms of mental health and where mental health should fall in a defense. Um, there's no doubt that Emmanuel Sampson has schizoaffective disorder. There's no doubt that he has post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and he was not right on that day. I mean, all, he's never been in trouble before. All the testimony really shows that he'd never had any problem with the church. They'd always been very kind to him, and he had always been good to them back. And this is just a really tragic example of mental health. I think in the future we'll understand mental health better. In the future we'll understand why sometimes people do bad things when they're suffering from mental disease and why some people don't. We'll have better predictors of who's going to turn violent. And you know, until that time, we're just operating in the criminal justice system for these people. But I really think that one day in the future, maybe within the next 51 years, you know, we'll discover more of what's really happening with these people. And, and people that have real mental health disease, one, could get treatment before something bad happens, and two, certainly wouldn't be subjected to the criminal justice system as people without mental disease. So. How is Emmanuel doing? What is he, how does he feel today? Well, I think he's disappointed, but he's been very stoic the whole time. So he's always been very polite to me and he thanked me. We went in the back and talked to him and he was very appreciative of the job that I did for him and he was thankful and and so I think he's holding up. I, maybe he's doing better than I am. It seems like you're already um, building up a record for appeal. Um, can you tell us about what those plans might look like? Well, I think you always work on an appeal in any case and when things happen. I think that in our case, the law in Tennessee, you know, the court was following the law in terms of letting in the expert testify <laughs> beforehand. I wish that Dr. Montgomery had been able to testify about Emmanuel Sampson's mental health problems during the guilt innocence phase, but the law in Tennessee is very bad on that. Um, we are hoping to change the law. We're hoping that it changes and that in the future um, an expert witness would be able to testify at the guilt innocence phase because I think it's the jury's right to have as much information as possible and I think the jury would have found Dr. Montgomery's testimony helpful. Do you think Emmanuel Sampson's a bad guy? <clears throat> oh, I don't think he's a bad guy. No, he's done something terrible. I mean, he's done a terrible thing, but um, I don't think we should condemn any one person and I wouldn't condemn him on that, I think that, you know, what's happened is tragic. And I feel very much for the members of that church. I mean, they were kind, good people and didn't deserve what happened to them. You became emotional during your closing argument when talking about Emmanuel's character, about his family not being there. Where did that emotion come from? <laughs> well, I feel very bad for him. His family didn't come. I really wanted the family to be there, and um, I was hurt for him that they didn't come. And I was, you know, I was hoping to give him some hope. So, do you feel like the jury heard you? Do you feel like you were? How do you feel like you did in front of the jury? Do you feel like your defense was? strong? Do you feel like you did a good job? Do you, do you feel like the jury heard you at all? Well, it was a hard case and there were some pretty tough facts. Um, so I don't know what the jury was thinking. You know, it's hard to know how much of it 
they heard and if they balanced what they heard out with what they felt that they should do for the family, you know, it's hard for me to judge that. So, okay. Thank you.